Hey guys, welcome to my cyberpunk tutorial. I'm starting off with the first base spray primer. Then I'm going to start concealing with the dark circle concealer in fair. Then moving on to the color correcting palette, I'm using the yellow to cover up my blemishes. Next is my favorite foundation by NYX and it's the HD foundation, I'm using number 2. And to further conceal some spots, I'm using the HD concealer in number 3.5. I'm going to set my under eyes with an HD finishing powder in banana. I'm also taking it in my T-zone. Then I'm setting the rest with the mineral set it don't fret it powder in light medium. Now I'm doing some very very light contouring with an HD blush in taupe. I'm taking it around the whole perimeter of my face and on my nose. And I'm setting everything with a matte finishing spray. It's really cooling in the LA heat. I'm not going to fill in my brows but I'm going to keep them in place with an eyebrow shaper. And now come the fun little face tattoos. I'm using the Vivid Brights liner in Vivid Violet. For designs like this that require a lot of symmetry and a lot of straight lines, I like to create little dots to guide me along, instead of just going straight in with a line. The little dots are a great guide and are easy to erase if you mess it up. The line under my right eye was thicker than the other one and I preferred the thinner line, it was a bit more delicate. So if you encounter a problem like that, you can just erase it with a Q-tip. For symmetry, I find it easier to work on both sides at the same time, as opposed to doing one side first and then the other. Now grab your prosthetic so that you can draw guidelines. I'm lining it up to my face and using the white slide on glide on pencil to map out where the prosthetic ends. Be sure you're drawing on your face though and not on the prosthetic as I did. The pencil is easy enough to clean off of the prosthetic though. Then back in with a purple liner, I drew more tattoos. These tattoos are mainly for hiding the seam between the prosthetic and my face. Once you're done, line the prosthetic up again to see if you need to fix anything. I had to make the sidelines a bit thicker. Also, don't forget to do the tattoos on your prosthetic too. I did the chin design on the prosthetic off of my face. Just clean up the white guidelines with a q-tip and you should be good. And you're done with the tattoos. Since I didn't do any eyeshadow at all for this look, I really wanted my lashes to stand out. I used the full figured waterproof mascara and was sure to apply two heavy coats of it. Now from this point in the makeup, you can go one of two ways. Either do the robotic bottom half of your face or do the full human makeup. Let's start with a robotic look because I know that's what you guys want to see. Now this is just a very quick run through of what I did to create my prosthetic. If you want to see an in-depth video on how I made it, please let me know in the comments below. I cast the bottom half of my face using alginate. I used plaster bandages to give the alginate a sturdy backing. Then I mixed some silicone and slush cast it into my alginate. Because this was a mold I was only going to use once, I didn't bother making it out of silicone. Then I colored the piece to match my skin tone using alcohol activated paints and my foundation of choice. And that's it. Now back to the makeup. I started by creating some cool motherboard designs on the top half of my face using clear UV activated face paint. I used the NYX liner brush for this so I could get really nice straight lines. Now it's not 100% clear as it claims. It shows up on the skin a little bit white. The lighter you go with it, the clearer it will seem, but it won't show up as well under the UV lights. I did about two to three layers because at this point I just wanted it to show up on UV rather than it be 100% clear. I also had no idea that my hair reacted to UV light so that was a really cool surprise. See how funky this looks? Now onto the robotics. I used the slide on glide on pencil in tropical green. I mapped out all the shapes with this. Oh, but first, I forgot to erase my little nose tattoos. I also went ahead and removed any makeup I had on the bottom half of my face. This will allow for a better application since the products won't be slipping on top of foundation. Because this design is so intricate, I sketched it beforehand and used my face chart as a reference. I recommend doing this on looks that are really intricate like this. I also recommend always keeping your pencils sharp when you're trying to draw thin lines. And if you don't like the way something looks, just erase it with a q-tip. It's that simple. I used the faux black pencil in onyx to draw in some cables. Altering colors like this will just give more depth to the design. Then with a slide on pencil in white, I gave the cable some volume by creating highlights. You'll want to smudge it out with a small lip brush. This just helps blend the colors together seamlessly. I grabbed my prosthetic to see if I was going too low on my face with the design. I wanted everything to show up, so I ended up raising the position of the cables. 
Then with a faux white pencil and baby powder, I continued to highlight the rest of the design. Remember to always blend it out with a brush. These products are all creamy, so they blend really nicely into each other. Then with a faux white and honeydew, I created some brighter highlights on the highest points of the design, so mostly around the edges and corners. This just helps to give volume to an otherwise flat design. For shading, I used the faux black pencil in Midnight. I concentrated this on the upper edge where my face quote unquote opens. I also shaded my mouth and any areas that I wanted to give more depth to. Then with some black face paint, I'm filling in all the gaps. I started with a lip brush, but then moved on to a really tiny liner brush to get into all the little crevices and corners. Okay, you all know how much I love the liquid liner from the Noir collection. It's got the thinnest applicator of all time, and I use this to define all the edges of my design. So I'm basically tracing around all the shapes. This will really give a sense of dimension because you'll get to define what shape is in front of other shapes. I also used it to make my lines super sharp, and did some detailing on the gray cables. Then with some prosthetic adhesive, I glued an actual wire to my face. I applied some on the piece I wanted to glue down, pressed it up against my face so that there would be glue on my face, and reapplied the glue on the piece. I waited for both surfaces to dry, and then just joined them together, then continued doing detailing. With a jet black slide-on glide-on pencil, I added depth to the cables that I wanted to appear further in. By making them darker, you'll make them seem like they're further inside of your head. Now this is the part that I think truly makes a design stand out, and that's the white highlighting. I used the white liquid liner to add some details along the edges of my design. By creating little points of light, you make the design really stand out. It just ups the contrast and adds a lot more dimension to your design. I made sure to hit all the little ridges on the cables as well. With the Vivid Brights cream color and Endless Skies, I blended out the highlights a bit more. This just made for a smoother transition. Then to brighten those highlights back up again, I used the white gel liner. This is super pigmented, so I used it just on the high points that I wanted to give a really bright highlight to. Adding a highlight to the inside of my lip really made it stand out and made it have a really artificial feeling to it, which is what we're going for. Now with a Vivid Brights liner and Vivid Halo, I created little tiny cables. You just want to keep these pretty thin, and you can make them crisscross for added dimension. I grabbed another wire and tested out the positioning on my face. I had to trim it a bit to make it fit, added prosthetic adhesive to it again, and stuck it on. Then with a glam liner and glam platinum, I added two little stripes to my lips just as a little detail and also highlighted the cables. As a last little detail, I used the black liner to create tiny little dots which are essentially tiny little screws all over the edges of my design. I also cleaned up any edges that needed cleaning up. And finished filling the sides and bottom of my face with the black face paint. I also made sure to line my face seam. I don't know what else to call it guys, it's gonna be my face seam. Using the black primal color, I shaded around the face seam as well. This just gives a nice blended out shadow. I did a last bit of highlighting with a white gel liner and that's it for the makeup part. Using some pre-tinted silicone, I coated the front and back of the hardware pieces I was going to use. You want to mix part A and B and be careful with cross-contamination, do not use the same spatula for both. You want to mix equal parts of each of them. Make sure they're really well mixed together and apply it on your piece. I wasn't sure about the setting time of the silicone and I actually had to work a lot faster than I predicted, so I ended up having to make a second batch to finish the piece. See how it already started setting? I kind of panicked and spread it along the back of my eyepiece, but I had to make a second batch to finish the neck piece. When it's still workable, it's still very liquid and it'll look a lot smoother when you try to spread it. I created little flaps along the upper and bottom edges so that I could stick that down to my skin. I also added some more to the back of my eyepiece. 
I just did this so it would be easier gluing it down to my face, rather than trying to stick hardware directly onto my skin. Once the silicone is set, you just want to powder it and you're done. Since silicone only sticks to silicone, you'll have to use a silicone adhesive for this. Wait for the solvents in it to dry and then press it onto your skin. You can powder it if you got some excess glue poking through. Now I've put on my wig and time to glue on our chin piece. I kind of held it in place and figured out where I needed to apply the glue. I decided not to put any on the bottom part and just focus on the sides. So right on my jawline but on the sides rather than in the center. That way the piece has flexibility to open but will still stay on your face. And you're done! Now for the human part of the makeup, just do the chin design on your own chin, not on the silicone piece, but use the silicone piece as reference. Here you can see I had to adjust mine a little bit. I then applied the Butter Lip Balm in Brownie to give my lips a slightly darker hue. Then with black face paint, I used a dry brush technique all around my eyes making it very asymmetrical. I brought it up to my temples and down to my cheekbones too, and even on my nose. I wanted this to be very messy and striking, but also pretty in its own way. I used the Jet Black Slide On Glide On pencil to align my water lines. I made sure to tight line them, and that's it. Put on your wig and your septum piercing, and you're good to go. I hope you guys liked this video as much as I liked making it. I had a lot of fun. I couldn't be happier with the theme they gave us. If you did like it and would like to see me continue in the competition, you can vote for me three times a day every day per email from July 14th to the 21st. I'll leave the link in the description below. Every vote counts and I literally can't make it to the next round without your help. So I will be so, so grateful if you vote for me. You have no idea how much I appreciate your support and your votes. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.